<laughs> Level complete! Oh, did I die? <gasps> oh, what happened? I died during the thing! Yes? What happened? Oh, it overrode- Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happens if I re-enter? I might re-enter at the last checkpoint. Let's see. Ah, oh, that's sad. That that would have been cool. I, I legitimately felt like I had a good shot of of glitching the game there. Oh. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Pac-Man World 2. Last time, we experienced the Volcano World's Magnum Opus with Magma Opus, which I love that name, and I'm glad you guys did too, and Clyde slash Blinky in the Caldera. This time, we are going to the Water wor World, and I would like to point out how unmeta this this world progression has been. We started out with the grassland, which is fairly normal, but then we went into a timberland. Usually the two are merged. And then a snow region, and then what is typically reserved for the final world, that being lava, one of the most extreme conditions on Earth, we get that third from the last world? Yeah, third from the last world. So, we're moving into what is typically like, what is that, the third world? The water world. Scuba doo. Oh. oh, wow, we're we're thrown right into it. Oh, this this is weird. I totally forgot how this controls. It that's weird. It's this is an auto scroller. I I don't remember that. I guess that's kind of that's going to be a trend from here on out because as a as a child I never made it this far. I made it this far in more recent memories, but I did not remember this being an auto scroller. That that sets up rather well for uh, for the levels to come, actually, because strangely enough, this is the only swimming level in the game. Despite us being in a water world, this mechanic, ow, well, I got to show off that mechanic. If you ever get hit by the, uh, if I ever get hit by the mines, there's a, oh, they're blowing up. There's a speedrunning tactic where pressing B to do, uh, can I look at controls? No. Pressing B does a, a spin attack, and after we got hit, get hit by a, a, a mine, I can, oh, the Lego Sharks, ow. Stay in Lego Sharks. But I can press B and get a, a huge momentum boost, ow. Okay, that, that thing is, that attack is super risky, especially since I'm not exactly sure how to control it. Oh, this is gonna be weird. Underwater ghosts! Looks like I need the tornado spin. Whoa! Did not see that! Uh, oh, I got the token. I did not remember this being an auto-scroller. -scro that is wacky! So many mines! And I'm so far away from getting another slice of life from Pack Dots, so... These three hits I have are pretty much all I have. Oh, boy. Pull up! Ow. Didn't pull up hard enough. Man, somebody does not want us reaching the end. And it's kind of interesting because we're, we're reaching a point in the game where things are going to go through a change. Uh, a, few, a few comments have talked about how repetitious, ow, how repetitious the, the bosses are. And while I do agree, they actually, those, those bosses take up less than a half. Oh, I might die. I might die. Oh, let's get this for the security of mine. But those, those repetitious bosses only make up... Oh, I... Uh, a half of the game. So from here on, actually less than a half of the, of the game's bosses are that blade matic style. So from here on out, it's, it's going to be... <laughs> it's going to be smooth sailing. There will be no more repeats for the rest of the game. And it's very odd that they did that, but remember that this game is telling a story. We're looking for all of the golden fruits and the ghosts are our first culprits. So that is a story that's being weaved, so it makes sense that that would happen. And also, I don't have a... I got stuck on that thing again. I don't have a huge problem with the bosses that, we have, that we've faced, actually. Even though we've only seen one unique one, uh, and then three bundled together, I think that they have decent, like, balancing levers, where they're able to increase the difficulty 
well, where it still feels fair and it feels like a new experience every time. And it's, remember this, this game is very intentional from what we've seen. It, levels exist, ow, for a reason. Like this level being an auto-scroller is there for a reason to introduce us to the concept. And so all of those bosses building on each other means that every boss, its reason for existing, oh, back to full health, is to uh, to supplement our knowledge so we can fight the more difficult uh, carbon copies of that boss more easily. So it, it's, it's interesting. I, I personally don't hold it against the game. I think those jellyfish would hurt me. I don't hold it against the game for doing what they did. While I do think that some of the bosses, hello Galaxian, do could use a few more attacks. Like all of the blade matics could use maybe two more attacks because currently they only have two. I I'm fine with the progression and difficulty that they had. Well, this is a nice change of pace. We went from lava to something a bit more refreshing. And considering how much I've been longing for a drink of water, thanks to all those those lava levels, this is. This is a nice tall glass of water. Will I get the, the fruit target? Yes, I did. Oh, I made a terrible mistake. Oh, yes! AI manipulation for the win! Oh, they're in scatter. Perfect. Oh, actually, no. They weren't in scatter. That's that's so good. If I if I get right in front of them, oh, this is this is a, a technique. If I get right in front of the ghosts as they're about to stop running, then they're forced to turn around, meaning that I can leverage that to my to my uh, own ends, forcing them to run away from me since they can't turn around again. Oh, that's good. Yeah. AI manipulation for the win! Oh, so many jellyfish! They move up and down, they're hard to see. That was close. Yeah, th this is a weird auto-scroller. I don't think I've ever... Uh, well, I, I mean, I've played, obviously played this level before, but this is not a mechanic that I see too often in video games, and I, it's, it's new to me, so it's... It's not, I don't think it's, like, it's hard to say if it's flawed or not. It's it's really weird. Because on one hand, and we're piloted in there. On one hand, I've never seen it before, but on the other hand, uh, auto-scrollers are usually pretty bad. It's, it's weird. It's it's really weird. I've, it's not something that I'm really, that I'm not used to. I probably could have covered this topic earlier, but I wanted you to have an impression of the game before I spoke of the other entries in the series. Especially considering how diverse this series is. Yeah. D diverse. Before starting this Let's Play, my exposure to the first game was restricted to a risky click on a random silent playthrough. However, as I was digging for material for the Namco mini doc, skipping through that playthrough proved just how much of World 2's foundation was built upon World 1. This being Pac-Man's 20th anniversary title, the devs were keen to shake up the conventions of the franchise making the transition to 3D platforming? These kinds of terrarium, semi-3D levels are not what I'm accustomed to, even with 3D Land and World making them popular in recent memory. Still, the game should feel familiar after experiencing 2, and it's much longer. After seeing World 1, I would describe this game as being Pac-Man World 1 if it hadn't been limited by its hardware. Do you know why I say that? Well, because we get to see what Pac-Man World 2 looks like, limited by its hardware. Did you know that it was released on the Game Boy Advance? World 2 reimagined through the lens of the first game. It's a great pitch, but the GBA dampers what was possible on the PS1. It attempts to fudge an illusion of 3D with sprites, sullying Pac-Man World 2D's legacy with poor depth perception and iffy ledge detection. It also drops the ball on the music, with tracks from the GameCube release placed sporadically throughout the game. Worlds 1 and 2 were handled by, essentially, the same dev team. World 3 was an entirely new team, 
expected to follow up on the success of the second title. A series that had been developed in-house was now being passed to Blitz Games, a company responsible for such classics as Chicken Run the Game, Bratz Rock Angels, and iCarly. <sighs> These games represent everything I hate about the quality assurance of third-party games. So the question remains, did Pac-Man World 3 live up to the legacy of the previous two installments? Let me put it this way. At some point, I was going to propose that I play through Pac-Man World 3 immediately following the end of 2. I knew that the general consensus was that the game was bad, and my own experience watching Nova backed that up. But I thought I would enjoy poking fun at it, comparing and contrasting the two games. But, <laughs> after recording the first hour of it for this video, that's no longer a consideration and is no longer a an offer I'm going to be extending. I don't think I've ever gotten sick to my stomach because I was so disgusted by a video game. Why? Pac-Man is sluggish, and on top of that there is more input lag than when you play Smash Ultimate Online. The camera controls are worse than World 2's. They get stuck on everything, there is no button to center the camera behind you, and you can only look from side to side. The big thing of this game is that you can punch enemies, racking up a combo meter. That sounds exciting, and it certainly would be if there were more than two enemies in the game. I was bombarded with the same fight over and over again. Well. Uh, they do try to break up the monotony by adding power-ups designed to make combat more interesting. Th they didn't work. Listen to this music. Now, listen to this music. energy in your sector, Pac-Man. Details of my sector's energy should be between me and Miss Pac. Thank you very much. Jokes! There's weird techno stuff here, Orse. Yours? Heavens, no! Shoddy crescent ship like that. It all belongs to Irwin. He's building uh. spectral siphons all over the place. Keep stockpiling raw materials. I'd like you to disrupt, distress, and otherwise blow up anything of his you see. Please. Glitches! Camera! Remember these levels and how each one adds a new mechanic or builds upon a previous one in an inventive manner? From my hour and 20 minute recording session, these were the levels I ran into. Open world level where you have to wander aimlessly collecting gems to open a door. After a nausea inducing cutscene, the game dropped me in another giant open area. This area is the Spectral Realm, the plane of existence that the ghosts come from. Sounds cool, right? It would be if they hadn't copy-pasted the same enemy over and over again. Look, recycling enemies is one thing, but preventing the player from progressing until they killed every enemy is not a good idea when you do it seven times in one level with the same enemy. What's worse is when the level itself is just as repetitive, Spend five minutes spawn camping the portals to move on to the next segment, where you have to touch every sonic ring, or follow this not very invisible path to move on to the next segment, where you spend five minutes spawn camping more portals, touch more rings, spawn camp more, rings, spawn camp, I get it, you ran out of ideas! Every moment of that recording was a cold reminder that this was the game that killed Pac-Man World. It made my blood boil. Part of the reason why Pac-Man World 2 lives on in obscurity is because of its sequel, because of a development team that followed a recipe and had no idea how to use the individual ingredients of their craft. This game was the one and only time Blitz Games would be handed a beloved gaming franchise to develop under. In 2013, they would announce that they no longer had the revenue to support development. Moving on to become a company called Radiant World, they would continue to flounder, cancelling their first project before being completely bought out by Rebellion Developments. But hey, at least I've been taught a valuable lesson. I now know what Sonic fans have had to deal with for the past... since Sonic 2. Scooby-Doob is done. That that didn't take too long. And we're... Oh, I, I can skip that? Really? Oh. 
Well, that saves me a lot of awkward downtime in between levels. Neat! I can just press A and skip that. Okay, let's move on to level 2, Shark Attack, and watch... Oh wait, is this level also swimmy? Oh, this level's also swimmy. Oh, wait, really? Oh, I guess it is. Yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I had my levels mixed up. Ow. Those are hard to avoid unless you have the foresight to see them coming, which I guess is one, one of the issues with this mechanic. Yeah, I totally forgot that there were two swimming levels, which means either Future Pal corrected me. Ah! There are so many rockets! Why is this called Shark Attack? We've seen two sharks! We've seen two sharks and missiles every- ow! This is- this is kind of intense! I have to look way- it's- uh, this is almost like driving when I think about it. I have to look very far ahead to plot my course. Because if I just react to what I'm seeing, I- I won't- I won't have a, a nice course here and I'm gonna- I'm bound to run into things. Let's get this ghost- we can! Oh, he had a token in him. Right, there's another token! Neat! Avoid the things! This is crazy! But I made it through, wow. Oh, that's- that probably had the Galaxian in it too. That's sad. That's really sad. You know what would have been cool for some of these levels? If there were those sealed boxes that had fruit in them that would le that you had to get for another sealed box, and then it would just keep going. I can't go through there. Ooh. And it would just keep going until eventually you get the Galaxian. There's so many bomb barrels. Why are they depth charging me? Oh, get through this. Get through this. That reminded me of Wind Waker right there. In fact, this area reminds me of Wind Waker. Look ahead, pal. Look ahead. Take your own advice. Of course, there are the oranges that we need. Okay, grab this. Grab this. Line two. Slice of life is back. Watch the missiles. And then... Don't get hit by the missiles! I got hit by... I mean, I guess not the missiles, but the things. Token! The J.R.R. Tolkien! Oh, the invincibility. Yeah, this is... This is slightly intense. Even though we're not moving that quickly, the threats coming at us technically are. And uh, I guess also I need to move. The disjointed hitboxes of everything really throws me off. Don't get hit, Pac-Man. Go right by the shark. So, see inside that shark. Thankfully, we didn't have to experience the inside of that shark. Because that would not be good. That would not be good. But I think we're fine. I think we're near the end of the level. Got another token. Got hit. The death charges are... Oh, I died. I didn't die! I didn't die! Ah. Uh, this is one of the most intense water levels I've ever played. And usually water levels are not... Not smiled upon. I don't think... Ooh, in my opinion, they aren't as bad as ice levels. I know certain certain people disagree, including people that I've featured in my channel, but I don't think they're as bad just because the the level of control I'm getting is so how was I supposed to avoid that? Is so drastically different. Ooh, they're in the, oh, there's the Galaxian! Man is so substantially different from the rest of the game, it doesn't feel as bad. Because it's it's a completely different set of controls. Okay, the depth charges I need to answer with the spin attack. I have the spin attack for a reason. Do you see what is happening to Pac-Man when I press L? He's like fidgeting. Oh, I'm, I'm to the end. I'm to the end. I'm to the underwater bunker. <laughs> Those were levels. Wow. That's um. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about those. They were they were tense to the bitter end, but they're also extremely short. Is that just me? Best time travel at 154. I'm not sure if that's our time, but we spent we spent next to no time in these levels. I was expecting since they're water levels, since movement is so much slower in water that we would be in here for for like 10 minutes a piece, but I don't think we were in here for over 7. That's kind of 
wacky. It's throwing me off. The topic of the day is also throwing me off, I guess. That It's not a cheery one, and it, it's one that I've been hesitant to make for the entire series because I knew that it would end up upsetting me, but I think that these levels were good ones to pair with it, <laughs> if only for the name of the episode alone. And also because they're fairly relaxing, at least the first one was. That is going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I release new episodes of Pac-Man World 2 every Tuesday and Thursday. And join me next time. Next time for a hopefully a slightly cheerier episode of Pac-Man World 2. See you guys then.